Dr. Leslie Lam. I work as an interventional cardiologist. This means that I do a lot of intervention with the coronary arteries when they're blocked, and we try and prevent heart attack by either using balloon or angioplasty. So this has become my main speciality. I first reported the case of balloon angioplasty in Singapore back in 1988. Since then, we have done thousands and thousands of such patients. Now, today we're going to talk about coronary heart disease, what we can do to prevent the coronary heart disease, and what we can do to prevent damages from acute heart attack. The term ischemic heart disease and coronary heart disease are used to mean the same thing. Our heart is such a fantastic organ, it beats about 1.2, 1.3 billion times in our lifetime, and yet it's totally dependent on three arteries for survival. If any one of these arteries get blocked, we are going to get a heart attack. If a major artery gets blocked, we get a major heart attack. And heart attack can have a mortality of something like 5 to 30%, depending on which artery gets blocked. Now, what happens in coronary heart disease or ischemic heart disease is that cholesterol plaque gets laid down in the wall of the coronary artery. What starts off the process initially, we are not sure. But this cholesterol plaque then gets worse as time goes on, and then it causes an inflammatory response. And most heart attack is due to this cholesterol plaque rupturing. And when it ruptures, a blood clot will form and totally occlude the supply to the coronary artery below. So when a plaque ruptures, it causes a complete obliteration of blood supply to the part of the heart, just so to the plaque rupture. Can we do something about it? Yes, and we can. The most effective way to deal with this condition is actually to put a balloon in there and squash a plug or suck out the plug and then put a stand and re-establish blood supply to the heart. If we can do that early enough, we can actually abort the heart attack. Or if we don't abort the heart attack, at least we will diminish the damage done to the heart. Now, the problem is most people do not report a heart attack for some hours after the event. In the first two hours, if we can get in and open up the artery, as I said, we can restore the blood supply and very little damage can be done. But once the two hours is up, we start to get permanent and irreversible damage to the heart and a lot of death occurs after two hours. In fact, with a major heart attack, every half an hour, you increase the mortality by some 5 to 7%. So the main thing about the heart attack is diagnose it early, get to the hospital, get intervention, and this may save your life completely. As I said, the most difficult part is how to get the patient into hospital in time. The average wait for a patient coming to hospital from the onset of heart attack to the time when they get into the hospital is something like five to seven hours, depending on where you live, how far out you're away from the hospital. There are many reasons for this delay. Number one, 30% of our heart attack occurs without chest pain. Patient doesn't know he has a heart attack until the next day when he becomes very breathless. In fact, diabetics, some 60% of them have no chest pain with a heart attack. Secondly, a lot of heart attack occurs in the early hours of the morning, most common time probably between 5 and 6 a.m. when we have our blood pressure surging upwards at that time of the day. So any patient getting a heart attack at 6 a.m., they are reluctant to call the cardiologist at 6 a.m. So they wait till about 9 o'clock before they call for help, by which time a lot of damage is done. And thirdly, a lot of patients do not want to believe they have a heart attack. In fact, some doctors coming in with a heart attack some five to seven hours later, I will ask them, why didn't you come in earlier, knowing that you come in early, this could save your life. And they all want to think that they are not having a heart attack. They wish that it was a gastric, gastritis or something. They don't want to believe they have a heart attack. So because of all these reasons, a lot of patients get very bad damage to the heart from a heart attack or die unnecessarily from a heart attack. So the main question is, how can we diagnose a heart attack early so that we can get the patient to come in the hospital for help? Okay, about 15 years ago, an American scientist invented a device called AngioMed Guardian device. This device is implanted like a pacemaker Using artificial intelligence and special algorithm, instead of pacing the heart, this device would diagnose the heart attack within two minutes. If a patient gets a heart attack, the device will vibrate 
very strongly inside the chest and we would also send a signal to an external box which trigger off an alarm. With this device, a heart attack can be diagnosed within two minutes of its onset. But this device, is, you need to implant it like a pacemaker. It's a small procedure done under local anesthesia and we would select therefore very serious cases before we implant this device in. Cases that we select are those who have had major heart attack before, knowing that the next heart attack would likely kill them unless they get to the hospital in time, or patients with multiple stents or bypass operation done before, and especially patients with diabetes, as 60% diabetic get heart attack without chest pain. So after 15 years of research, the Guardian Angel Med Guardian device was approved by the FDA in the United States. 2020, I have implanted the first Angel Med Guardian device, and since then, I've implanted in eight patient. All eight patients are obviously have very severe coronary heart disease. So far, we have no major heart attack from this eight patients that we've implanted, and we hope that this will go on for a while. I don't relish the idea of getting a major heart attack among these patients with severe coronary heart disease. It would be a challenge, but hopefully we can save his life if that happens. Since last year, the angiomet device has now been re-approved in the U.S. by the FDA, and they have implanted few hundred devices in since. I believe the AngioMed device has a place for treatment of coronary artery disease, especially in patients who have been documented to have severe coronary artery disease involving some major artery and that any heart attack involving this artery may be a cause of the death. This device, in theory, can save life. Well, what is the best benefit of this device to the patient? Basically, all the patients who have had the device implanted feel extremely safe. They feel that if they do get a heart attack, they would be diagnosed and be in hospital in time to have any intervention. And they actually feel very, very good about it. Our, the first patient we had, he is now almost 80 years old. He had a major heart attack at the age of 39 and subsequently had bypass operation done. And after bypass, there was about eight stents put into his heart. He knows very well that another heart attack, he may not survive unless he gets to the hospital in time. But since we've implanted the Angel Mac Guardian in him, he feels so absolutely safe. He's now doing a lot more physical activities, gym training, and he feels on top of the world. So for him, the psychological advantage is so great that he's never been feel so happy about his health since his major heart attack from 40 years ago. This patient should have had the device and feel very happy and then they feel very safe. They feel that if they do get a heart attack, they will be in hospital in time and we can do a emergency angioplasty and save their life. So as we implant more and more of this device, we may select patients who have left severe coronary artery disease. And this device proved to be more effective than we can uh, give it to patients more liberally. At the moment, we are very selective in our choice of patients.